Hello. Today I want to show you how you can use sublevels to organize your environment projects uh, much better. So to get started, you're gonna have to use a basic level. This is not gonna work in the open world a word partitioning system. So let's go ahead and create a new level and I'm gonna save this my project name. Uh, create a new folder levels you want to have this structure because you're going to create separate files so you want to keep this stuff organized so let's say this is going to be my environment 01 so let's save here and this is the standard system right like uh, all this stuff is in the same level and to start using the sublevels, let's go to Window and enable Levels here. And I like to have this next to the Outliner. And and here you're gonna notice that you only you have this persistent level. So persistent level is the root of the map. Uh, usually I don't keep any files any actors here unless necessary. Like the navigation data sometimes needs to be there. But uh, every, I, I try to keep this root clean. So let's start creating our sublevels here. And to do that, you can click on levels, go to create new, and choose empty. And now we have to save. Oh, and I forgot to name this file here, but that's not a problem. So let's create another folder called sublevels. And we are going to save all the sublevels there. So we can create. Uh, sublevels for different things that you want to keep organized. Uh, so, for example, we can have geometry, lighting. So, I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to create a few example sublevels. Okay, so I created a few example sublevels here. And the next thing to notice is this little green icon. When you see this little green icon, it means that this level is not going to be loaded when you hit play. So to do that, you select all of them, right click and change streaming method to always loaded. So now when you play the level, they're always going to be loaded. Uh, the exception here is going to be the scale reference. This one I'm going to keep as blueprint because in this one, I'm going to keep uh, scale reference models uh, that I don't want to be visible when I play the game. So let's go back here to our outliner and because we are in the skill reference folder uh, sub level when we go to the outliner is empty that's because i have this option enabled only in current level so if you disable this you see ev everything at once and i think it gets very confusing when it's like this so if you have sub sub levels um make sure you have only in current level because then you see only what's there and uh, let's go back to the persistent level and start moving things here to the right folder. So I selected lighting, all the stuff here, and then I go to lighting, double click, and move selected actors to level. So now all the lighting information is going to be in a separate level. And let's do that for the geometry, which is just the floor that we have here. So I'm going to move this here. Uh, so now that uh, I have this set up, I can lock the other layers to make sure that I don't use them by accident for now. So I'm going to build something real quick here using uh, this block out kit that I created, which is part of my env environment art mastery tutorial. Uh, so I'm just going to build a quick scene here and then I'll come back and show how I organized it. Okay, so I just dropped some pieces here, uh, and if I hit play, everything should work fine. Uh, so, I was working on the geometry layer, so when I go to the outliner, I see 
all the geometry pieces but now if I switch to lighting it's not gonna let me because I have the lock there so if we unlock now I go to lighting and I see only the lighting stuff and I could even lock the geometry layer you know so I don't touch that stuff by accident so you see like now I can only select things in this uh, layer so this is a very powerful feature that you don't get if you use the standard uh, organization method. And the next thing that I want to show you is the, let's say, editor-only layers. So I'm just going to place some uh, skill reference here. These are models that are very helpful when you are building the level, but you don't have them in the game. And there is no way to do this if you don't use uh, sublevels. So again, because of the green icon here, it means that this level only loads if a blueprint loads it. So if I hit play, those objects don't appear. So this is extremely useful. And let's go to the gameplay layer now. And let's see, okay, I don't have a player start, so I'm just gonna place a player start in the gameplay layer here. I wanna start here. So, there you go, you start there. So that's pretty much it. Uh, the only thing you really have to pay attention here is, is the file naming, because otherwise things will get very confusing, so that's why I created that folder. Because now if I go to levels, environment, I know that this is the base level, right? And let me just fix that real quick. Environment all one. Because if they were all in the same folder, you, you would get very confusing because they look the same here, right? These are just separate levels, you know? That's pretty much what they are. You, you're combining those levels with the persistent level. So this is an amazing feature that I highly recommend you use to keep your projects organized. Hey, if you enjoyed this video and you're looking to step up your environment art skills, I invite you to check my environment art creation course, Environment Art Mastery. This is a massive course that took me more than two years to put together and contains everything that I learned about environment art creation after more than a decade in the games industry. The course contains everything you need to know to be able to come up with your own ideas and take them to completion by using an easy to follow process that breaks down the creative process in logic steps. This process can be used to create all kinds of environments, no matter the style, theme or engine. If you want to know more, visit environmentartmastery.com or watch the deep dive video in my channel. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again in the next video.